Hi, welcome to today's Connected Caroline show. Today we have Julie Perlin Lee, who is the executive director of the Laguna Beach or Laguna Art Museum. And uh, she has an amazing background, worked with all the great museums in Orange County. And we are going to be talking about the art and nature program, actually it's the art and nature festival that the museum uh, hosts its annual event every year. Welcome to the program, Julie. How are you? I'm so good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So let's talk about art and nature. It's an annual event that the museum puts on and uh, what makes it so unique. Well, this event festival idea was blossomed uh, 10 years ago, or a little earlier before that, but the first took place 10 years ago. And the idea was to rekindle and reconnect the original spirit of the artists that founded the museum, the Laguna Beach Art Association, um, and reconnect the contemporary public and contemporary time with what they found um, so irresistible about Laguna Beach, um, this natural, beautiful coastal stretch of Southern California. And they were fortunate enough to be able to build homes here and establish an art colony and create artwork in their time. So they were contemporary artists. So it's a contemporary spin on those original founders 100 years ago, a little more than 100 years ago now for the museum. Um, so we're paying tribute to our roots by bringing contemporary art in nature, putting it out in nature um, for people to explore and to talk about this beautiful place we live in and um, and the discussions that revolve around nature and art, environment, et cetera. Yeah, so um, talk a little bit about the the parallels between nature and art. As a museum director, like how you incorporate that into this this particular festival? Well, it happens in so many ways, um, and it happens over time. Artists are always responding to the moment they live in and their surroundings. You know, in when the William Went and Anna Hills and uh, Payne and the others, uh, Griffith, when they were painting here, they were um, documenting the world around them and they were speaking about nature um, almost in a sublime way at times, um, a, a natural way. Um, a way of living that was, you know, very different than maybe the East Coast or Europe, where many of them immigrated from um, an industrialized world. So this was a really idyllic place. And California was um, kind of new territory in that way, um, almost like an Eden, right? And so their paintings were capturing that and those ideas. Um, They were painting out of doors because of our gorgeous weather allows for that. And they were painting the light. Um, You know, everywhere you go in the world, it has their own own light. And Southern California has a very special light, um, just like any other place. But it was um, something they were very interested in capturing, especially when I think about artists like Frank Kuprian, who were uh, looking at light in relationship to our ocean and reflection. And artists, as time moved on, continued that all, you know, through now. I think about the light and space artists that Southern California is well known for. Um, still, we have neo light and space artists. A lot of a lot of that practice came right out of UCI, just down the road here. And um, so, capturing the beauty of nature. Um, or the mysticism of nature, or uh, the sublime of nature, or even just sometimes the science science behind nature. It, th- those things have continued, continued to be shown through art practice in Southern California. We've entered a different era in, uh, hopefully, I, I think that many people we've done, uh, we've been changing our minds about how we think about nature and what we think about nature, and most importantly, how we treat and interact with nature. And so we see so many artists now talking about issues of environment, and uh, which is great, right? Um, anytime we can give artists a microphone to help explain how we interact with our 
our world. It's just a gift to the to the rest of us who maybe are not artists. It opens doors for us to have conversations about our place, our environment, our um, and you know our actions. And so um, this year, it's really exciting that our artists that we're working with for Art and Nature are having or putting forth those ideas and talking about them in their artwork, maybe more than any of the um, art and nature artists we featured in the past. And so, um, so this year is our 10th anniversary for art and nature. And so it feels like, you know, those are very relevant conversations and safe conversations. And so we're excited about, um, you know, presenting the slate of artists and exhibitions we have this year. I love that. Yeah, I was going to hit on the conservation piece as well and um, how that is of, at the forefront of what Art and Nature is presenting this year. Um, talk about some of the artists that will be presenting that people can see yes. when they come to the museum. Of course, of course. So this year we have Art and Nature programs out of doors and indoors. And uh, we have four days of a lot of activity. But the good news is that uh, some of these projects will stay and be able to be seen for um, several months from November through February. Uh, Rebecca Mendez is a uh, design film, video um, uh, artist, and she is the uh, chair at UCLA in charge of the design media project. Yeah, she's a badass. <laughs> I heard her speak last weekend and she is awesome. I, I'm she really is, excited to see what she's delivering. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, she is awesome. She also has this really exciting project that she's worked on with um, students at UCLA called Counterforce that uses design to um, solve environment issues. Like, for example, how do you get birds to move from one community to another? Well, you build some incredible sculpture that's living to help them hop. Anyway, it's it's just, she is um, a wonderful person, an artist, and a great, great world thinker. Her project is called The Sea Around Us, and its purpose is to uh, connect us with the ocean, our relationship to the ocean. It uses indigenous thought and practice to maybe help us reconnect to how we position ourselves with nature, um, not in nature, but how anything that happens to the sea or anything in it is also is going to happen to us. So really to inspire this connectivity. And the film she's been working on for several months um, borrows footage from scientists who are presently working between here and Catalina Island in the channel to explore um, the who knows how many tons of chemicals that were dumped there in the 70s. And um, some of that was just dumped right into the sea. There's also um, barrels um, at the bottom of the ocean seeping um, things <clears throat> and poisoning our environment. So the project, the film, you see around us takes place in our steel gallery, 360 degree room, and it connects us from top of the sea, from the parts we can see, the kelp, animals, mammals, and it takes us all the way down to the bottom. It touches on and we see this site so that we're aware of it. And then it also brings us close to the smaller, more delicate creatures of the sea. Um, it uses diving and divers in a really exciting way, um, and indigenous people, song and poetry. So all, if you can imagine all of these things placed together into a film that help us um, really just reconsider our position and how, how, we, how, our, how we interact and who we are, and we are the sea and the sea is us. So that is our feature project. Um, we're very proud of it. It's been almost two years in the making and many, many people, many scientists, um, you know, the indigenous community, art makers, lots of graduate students <laughs> have all contributed to making this huge project. You know, it's really art as activism, <laughs> right? And um, I think that that's, you know, using their platform of being an artist to show activism, conservation, environmental, you know, issues through their art is is really 
a cool thing. And um, I hope a lot of people do come and check this out. And if you're listening from a different community or, or country, go to your museum and, and seek out these types of programs. Cause I'm sure that this, especially in the coastal communities all over the world, they're trying to do more conservation oriented art as activism. Is that, is that something you find is true? Yeah, I think it's encouraging to see that, you know, there's particular museums that are devoted solely to this topic. And for Laguna Art Museum, you know, um, we've been here for 104 years. And from the get go, you know, we are the art and nature museum. You know, we we are on the coast. I mean, we are we are right at the beach. So the idea that we are on the edge of the land um, is pressing in every, you know, every day for us. And um, whenever we are working with artists who come here, they can't help but also feel that the magnitude of that and the power of that. And um, so it's just a very special place. And for Laguna, it's, um, it's really what helps set us apart from others. There, there are other coastal, we have some sister coastal city uh, museums rather uh, in the state of California. And um, I think we all, all feel really um, fortunate, the good fortune of, of being you know, located where we are and how that helps us share with our visitors you know, these types of messages. So it's pretty exciting. So how do you get the word out to a younger audience um, of museum goers? What kind of partnerships do you, uh, have you developed to, to reach out to these? Actually, the people that really are going to be stewarding this land you know yeah. Yeah. Right. when that's just the way it is you know moving forward you always need to reach out to a younger audience and what makes art and nature exciting for a younger person well i think one of there's a couple of things about it so we haven't talked about our outside installation which is called pyramidian and having art out of doors is something that's very surprising, right? Especially for a museum, because usually everything's inside and protected and, you know, um, but out, out in nature, um, you can explore or come across or be a surprise by artwork. And certainly that's something that um, young minds or all minds actually is impressionable. Um, so that's one way we do it. So for Pyramidian, we're placing six pyramids, a reflective different sizes, one six feet tall, others smaller, in and around the park here on the coast, Heisler Park, um, and on the beach, main beach in Laguna. And so we are encouraging families, walk or by anyone to, to, you know, to come into contact with these beautiful sculptures and ask some of the volunteers who will be with them, you know, uh, to interact with them and find out what they are. So that's one way. And, and that a lot of that just happens organically, which is wonderful because when someone feels like they've made the discovery themselves, mm-hmm. it's uh, far more impactful. We have a family festival that we also put together. And all of this, I just want to mention, is funded by people in the community, sponsors in the community, and a couple of foundations who really care about pushing this message and and making Laguna the epicenter for art and nature. Um, We have a family festival that is free to the public. Also, it's out of doors and many, many of our partners are coming to participate. So um, I'm sure I'm going to forget them because there's so many, but we are working with uh, Surfrider and the Laguna Canyon Foundation, the Laguna Ocean Foundation, um, Coast Film Festival, um, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting all of them. Hold on, I have a cheat sheet. I don't want to forget because they're, they're great. Oh, Pacific Marine Mammal Center. And of course, we've been collaborating with them on Rebecca's film. Um, uh, we're working with Crystal Cove and Visit Laguna Beach. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of environmental nonprofits that work with us and they're coming to do activities and also share their message and what their role is here in Laguna and elsewhere. And so again, more of us make a powerful voice, right? Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to work with them. And then we also work with galleries in town because we can't have to have the art part too, of course. And so many of the galleries um, uh, in November are going to have exhibitions that are art and nature themed. 
which is great. So all of those partners are going to help us promote. And, um, and so hopefully we'll attract a broad group of people. We also work in our schools. So this is really exciting. So we do, we provide art education for local schools and all of the children are learning about the Pyramidian project. They're making pyramids. They're being encouraged to go out in nature and to place their pyramids in a place, photograph them. So they become artists. We're working with LCAD and their young, their students, they're not all young, but young Gesh, most of them are coming and painting out of doors as well. And so anyway, we're pulling as many partners as we can together and finding ways to partner. I love that the entire community is, is a part of all of this. So as the newer executive director, newer, you're, you've been there a year and a half. Uh, of the Laguna Art Museum. What is your vision and hope for the future of the museum? Oh, my vision for the future of the museum is um, we just we just actually I work with the board to um, come up with a really succinct vision for this museum. And that is to be locally loved and nationally recognized. And um, it's it's just as simple as that. And there's a lot to think about in those you know few words. But without our local community, anyone's local community, that's where it all starts. Our community, we serve we serve our community first. Um, we partner with them. We collaborate. It is an incredible community of people. So um, it's just a joy to do that. And we also want people to recognize this museum. Um, much broader in a much broader way. So things to expect from us are, um, you know, exhibitions that are, are a draw to people to come to Laguna Beach uh, that are um, recognizable. We want people to, who are coming, we have so many visitors to Laguna Beach, as you know, but we want to make sure those people are coming to the museum and we'll be doing some work to make sure when people leave the museum, they have a better understanding about why Laguna Beach is so artistic. Why do we have so many galleries? You know, most people who come here don't um, know the history here. And we know that that is our strength. This community was founded by artists, a lot of really tough cookies who did a lot of work. So <laughs> the least we can do is continue to honor them and thank them for what they started for us. Wonderful. Wow. Uh, very exciting. I'm looking forward to the Art Nature Festival, and I will definitely go check out the pyramids. That's going to be really, really cool, um, especially looking for the student produced or, I guess, created pyramids out there, um, yep. wherever they might put them. It's like, <laughs> what? what is that? Pokemon Go? Oh, yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. This is py Pyramid Go. Pyramid Go. I love that. <laughs> Julie, so great to uh, get to know you a little better and learn about the Laguna Art Museum and the Art and Nature uh, Festival that is coming up this month, um, which is October. We're recording October 6th. And um, so until next time, I, I uh, look forward to seeing you out and about. And uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'll see you around town. Thank you so much. Definitely. And uh, this is Caroline with Connected Caroline. Make it a giving day.